Hey, do you want to learn a great design called the Paisley Feather? It's quick to quilt, adds a beautiful texture, and I'm going to show you how to quilt it on a sewing machine. And you know what? I'm going to start right now. Alright, you ready for this? I promise it's not that hard. You're going to start by quilting an elongated swirl. It doesn't matter how long it is, I just really want to end in a swirl kind of shape. All the best designs start with a swirl. From that point, I'm going to echo my way back to the beginning. All the echoing is what really builds up this design and makes it look so amazing. Now, I'm not worried if the line is perfectly spaced. I just want them to be kind of smooth. As long as it's smooth, it's going to look nice. And I'm going to echo my way all the way back down to the beginning of the swirl. Even if it doesn't look great at this point, it doesn't matter because soon I'm going to start adding my paisleys. All right, let's add our first skinny paisley from the bottom. Now, I want it to be nice and skinny, almost like a little finger or something hanging right there. The reason I want it skinny is because I'm going to echo around that several times. This is what I talk about when I say this design is really echo heavy. It really doesn't matter how many times you echo that paisley, but you do want to end up at that spot where the paisley and the swirl come apart. It makes it almost like a V. And that V is where you want to add your next paisley so that it extends right out of the middle of that space. Don't forget to keep it skinny because that's going to leave you room on either side to add the echoing. Having that paisley extend right out the middle is going to leave you room to echo on both sides. And it's also going to make those paisleys wrap around the swirl nicely. Now I'm going to start echoing, tucking it in and coming around. I'm not necessarily trying to go back to the beginning of the paisley. I'm just going until I run out of room and then changing direction. So far so good, don't you think? Now it's time to add my next skinny paisley coming out of the middle of that area. And really focus on making it long. I don't want to make them too short. I really want to extend it out so that it really fills in the area. And then echo, echo, echo. Now don't forget, you really want to extend your next paisley right out of the middle. Now you might notice that my paisleys are a little bit more tilted to the side. That's perfectly fine. It really doesn't matter what shape your paisley is, as long as it ends in a curve and it's skinnier at one point, just echo around it and fill it in nicely. So let me tell you what I'm worried about right now. I'm not worried that my paisley is the perfect shape. What I'm focusing on is trying to keep the spacing consistent and trying to make those paisleys nice and long. The number one mistake I see people make when they're quilting this design is they'll make the paisleys too small. And right here I'm quilting them nice and tiny. The problem is this design looks much, much better when those paisleys are nice and long. See how tiny they are compared to the bigger ones? If this is something that happens to you, just echo, echo, echo. I'm going to echo around it and really use that echoing to fill in that space and make it larger. The most important thing is that we keep that spacing as consistent as possible. Alright, I'm working my way towards the inside of my swirl, quilting little bitty paisleys as I start to enter the inside of my swirl. Now, if you don't have room because your swirl is closed off, don't worry about it. The most important thing is that I fill it in with something. So you could add paisleys, you could echo, you could quilt Angela's awesome. Any of that will work. Just make sure that center swirl is filled in. Then once I'm filled in, I'm going to echo, echo, echo my way till I get to the outside of my paisley feather. And that, my friend, is the first paisley feather. That was so much fun. Let's do it again. The trick to adding our next one is to echo around the outside of the swirl till I get to the position where I want to add my next one. This is like a choose your own adventure. You can put that next paisley feather anywhere you want. It could extend down or it could extend out to the side. It doesn't matter. Just quilt it out into that space. Don't be afraid to really extend that first swirl out. You want to have a lot of room to fill in around with those paisley feathers. So make it as long as you feel comfortable, but then make sure you echo, echo, echo. And I want to end up at the bottom of the swirl on the side where I'll work around the outside of my swirl. If I find myself on the opposite side, I'll just echo. But here, I found myself at the right side. Now I'm ready to start adding more of those paisleys. So the next paisley is going to really extend out into that space, and then I'm going to echo, echo, echo. The most important thing is that I don't leave any gaps in between my feathers. Notice how the echoing tucks in there. I'm not traveling, I'm not going over any lines, I'm just going till I run out of room, then extending out and quilting my next paisley. And by now, you know the drill. I'm echoing, echoing, echoing. Now I feel the hardest part about this design is that you're going to have gaps where those paisley feathers come together. 
When you have gaps, you just have to remember to echo. You can echo the paisley you just quilted. You can echo a different paisley. As long as I fill in that area so that there's no unquilted space. Now I'm free to work around the rest of my swirl like we did previously. Now I'm going to say this a lot, but please don't be afraid to make those paisleys nice and long. That's what's going to help fill in this area. Then all you have to do is add some echoing and go into your next space. Now I'm starting to run into the edge of the quilt, so I'm going to have to make these paisleys a little bit smaller and be very mindful of the edge here. If this were an actual quilt, I probably would have basted down the edge, but it's just a sample, so I'm going to quilt my baby paisleys until I have more room. By now you know all the basics of this design. Swirl, paisley, echo. There's only three steps, and if you're not sure which one to pick, pick echoing. You have a 33% chance of being right and I'm working to the inside of my swirl. Now this one, I don't have quite as much room, so there's no room for those little bitty paisleys like I did last time. So as I get in there, I'm just gonna squeak in with an echo and then come right back out. Now you don't have to echo the paisley you just quilted. You could echo around and outside of a different paisley. This is what's gonna help you move around and get to the areas of your quilt that you need to get to. When it's time to add another paisley, use your fingers to trace out the next space. That'll help you visualize where you want to add your next paisley feather. And we're going to make our next paisley feather branch right off the one we just quilted. Nice and long, echoing, echoing, echoing. It doesn't matter which side of the swirl that you echo, just as long as you echo. And I'm going to work my way around the outside of that swirl and end at the bottom. Now from this point, I'm going to add my little paisley, but you can tell here I have a little bit of a gap, so I'm going to make it a little smaller and then add my echoing. Aren't you just loving this design? It's the same steps over and over again, making sure that paisley extends right out of the center, echoing, 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 no traveling. Man, it's so quick to quilt. Now one question I'm asked a lot when I travel and teach is about stitch length. Now here's the thing, consistent stitch length will come with practice, so don't worry about it when you're learning the design. Just know that as you get more comfortable quilting those paisleys and adding those echoes, that that consistent stitch length will work itself out. I say it's almost like worrying about your handwriting when you're still learning your letters. All right, hopefully you're excited to use this on your quilts, but I have just another quick thing to show you. Besides the echoing and besides the paisleys, we're going to talk about how to fill in those spaces between your paisley feathers. So I'm going to finish this one up, adding my little paisleys and echoing. It's so mindless and fun. Man, I think this is the best. Then once I get to the center, you can tell I'm running out of room. So I'm going to add my little paisley, my little echoing, and then it's time to echo my way around the outside so that I can get to my next one. Now I'm trying to use the foot of my machine as a guide. That's helping me keep it somewhat consistent. But remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. But as I come around, you're going to tell at that point where those two feathers come apart, I have quite a big gap. And what I'm going to do is use echoing to fill in that gap. It doesn't matter what you echo. You can echo what you just quilted. You can echo what you previously quilted. You can throw some paisleys in there. It doesn't matter what you put in there as long as you fill in that gap. I'm just going to keep filling in that gap until I have room to add my next swirl. And even if it's shorter than the others, it doesn't matter because it's the spacing between the lines that determines how dense the quilting is. That means if you want less dense quilting because you need to get this quilt done, then just spread out the spacing between your lines. If you like the way it looks and you want to quilt it to death, then you can make them closer together. It really depends on your preferences. There's no wrong way to do this. If you're anything like me, another thing you'll struggle with is getting stuck. And you'll notice here, as I'm working around my paisley feather, I'm starting to run out of room. I'm going to go ahead and add another little paisley, fill in that area, and then just squeak my way on out of there. I don't want to have to break thread to move on. I just want to be able to continue on quilting. Now that we know how to quilt the paisley feather, just sit back and relax as I finish quilting up this area, echoing, making my swirls and paisleys, filling it in consistently as possible.
what did you think? Don't you think it looked great on some of those quilt tops you have laying around? Be sure to let me know if you have any questions. All you have to do is leave a comment below. I read those and answer them periodically. Also, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel right there so you don't miss out on any future episodes. And I'll see you in the next quilting therapy tutorial.